Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about common mistakes that people make when they're starting their fitness journey and that's why they're not achieving their goals. And number one of that is thinking that it's a physical over a mental battle. Number two, trying to look like someone else or focusing too much on aesthetics. Number three, following someone else's program. Number four, impatience. Number five, intensity over consistency. Number six, overwork. Number seven, not doing their homework. Number eight, not tracking their progress. Number nine, doing sit-ups to lose their belly fat. Number 10, sweating means it's a good workout. Number 11, not sleeping enough. And lastly, number 12, not drinking enough water. So keep watching until the end and I will tell you my tips and tricks on what you should do instead so you don't make these mistakes. All right guys, so let's get on it. Okay, the number one mistake people thinking this is a physical battle over a mental battle. Guys, if you think that exercising or lifting weights is the hard part, that's where you're mistaken. The exercise or the physical part is actually the easy part. Once you get to the gym, once you build the habit of uh, working out, you're already there, you're inside the door. But the problem is how to start and how to stay consistent. Introducing change is the difficult part of it because human beings, as, uh, as our nature, we reject change. We don't want to change. And starting, to, starting your fitness journey involves overhauling your, your whole lifestyle. Maybe you have to wake up early. Maybe you have to set up a fixed time to start exercising. And that in itself is the main challenge. So if you can get this understanding that it's more than a physical battle, that it's really more in your head, how to create the habits, how to implement the changes, then you already have won half the battle. Okay, I put this as number two, but this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make, which is trying to look like someone else or focusing too much on aesthetics. And actually, I am a victim of this myself. When I started training um, or lifting weights or going to the gym when I was 17, I wanted to look like Brad Pitt. Uh, I wanted his shoulders, I wanted his chest like kind of square and everything so proportioned. And that's where the main mistake is because we cannot look like someone else. We all have a different anatomy. We have a different broadness of shoulder, how much, um, how much chest muscles you have or how much uh, people want to have a six pack. Like for me, I only have four um, even though I have a really flat uh, stomach and I have all the muscles really trained in my abdomen, which also includes focusing too much on aesthetics. It means trying to look a certain way, you know, like right now, I see a lot of uh, women wanting to have bigger hips, bigger butt, or men trying to get so much like really big biceps, um, really focusing on the upper body. And it's, it looks good. Yes, you, you know, it's a, looking good is a factor that you want to achieve when you are starting your fitness journey. But that's not all there is to it, guys. Fitness actually means that you are able to do what you want to do. So focusing on the look. So imagine a house which is looking good outside, but inside it's weak, inside it's dirty, inside is, you know, it's not hospitable. <laughs> you cannot even live in it. Uh, what's the point? You know, it looks good from the outside and people can see, oh, wow. Can people can admire you for looking good outside but inside when you're when, when you're just walking everything hurts all the time or you know you're killing yourself um, trying to look that way and that's not fun which is one of the advice I can give you later on number three is part of the number two mistake which is when you try to look like someone else you tend to follow someone else's program and the problem with this is when you follow someone else's program, it's not tailored for you. It's not personalized. And what works for others may not work for you. For example, I, I can tell you everything that I do. I can tell you, I, I can write you a program saying it's a beginner's program. But 
People who didn't work out or didn't exercise their whole lives cannot do something that is a beginner workout for me who has been working out or been active since I was a kid. And that leads to the next mistake, which is impatience. When you try to look like someone else, when you try to follow someone else's program, and you keep working, you keep putting all the hours and the effort and the diet, but you don't end up looking like them, then you start getting impatient. And when you start getting impatient, you, you start thinking, why am I doing this? Maybe I don't want to do this anymore, you know? Or you take shortcuts, which is the worst, first mistake that you can do when you're doing your fitness journey, taking a shortcut. And that means going on a crash diet, you know, following a keto diet or an intermittent fasting or no carbs or not eating anything, <laughs> just drinking cabbage soup. And these are just some of the examples that I've been hearing. And of course, um, at some point, you can reach a certain, uh, a certain level of achievement when you follow these kind of shortcuts. But the problem is, is it sustainable? Are you, are you gonna be able to keep this up uh, until many years after? Probably not. Try to look at it this way, guys. Before you reach your current situation right now or condition, how many years has it been that you've been eating junk, you're not exercising, you're not sleeping well, you're drinking alcohol or smoking? How many years has it been? Now, do you expect to reverse all of that in a matter of two to three months of dieting or exercising? I can tell you that no. The body is um, it's very good at adapting. So what you have achieved until now will take probably the same amount of time to reverse the whole thing. And what we normally say in the fitness industry is if you can lose the weight or if you can keep your certain fitness level for at least a year, then you're set for life. If not, then probably what you're doing is not sustainable and you're at one point you're just gonna fall off the wagon and go back to your old uh, lifestyle. So mistake number five is from impatience, you tend to do intensity over consistency. So <laughs> you're you're not getting the results that you want. So you think that I have to do more and more and more. And this is very common with people who are just starting. They really hit the gym hard. They have gym buddies around, you know, they go to, let's, let's go to the gym three, four weeks, uh, four days a week. But then it's, life happens and your gym buddy starts to go away or don't, don't, come, don't come to the gym as often as you wanted. Um, all the intensity, all the fire in the beginning is gone. And what happens? You lose the drive. You'll, say, you'll tell yourself like, uh, uh, maybe not today, maybe tomorrow. And <laughs> when you're not consistent in your fitness, um, fitness journey, that's when you actually don't get the results. Because as I've said in the beginning, our body is very adaptive. So whatever you put it into, it will start adapting to that. And if you wanna get results, guys, you need to be able to stay consistent. You have to be able to stick to a program. You have to be able to stick to a nutrition plan. If not, your body will just, okay, you're in a phase where, you know, something crazy just happened. So you know what, no problem, we'll keep it as it is. And this is true for weight loss. This is true for uh, getting lean. This is true for building muscles. And mistake number six is due to the uh, high intensity in the beginning, or you just tend to get frustrated and impatient, you end up getting overworked. So this, this happened to me before when I was uh, trying to get a six pack. I tried so hard to work so much. I was working two to three hours in the gym almost every day and I was I was eating only uh, sky flakes if you know what that is like a cracker tuna and protein shake and I thought that this is gonna get me the results that I want it's because of all these um, factors involved together that is causing this mental um, hurdles or mental challenges that I want to get the results that I want 
and therefore I should do more. And I, I believe you can see where the mistake is here. And mistake number seven is the contrast to overwork, which is not doing their homework. And this means that most people, they like to be told exactly what to do. And that even, that, even if that means following someone's program on the internet, on YouTube, and not actually doing the research, not studying enough, or not understanding how their body works. As I've said before, a program or a nutrition plan that works for someone else may not work for you. Heck, even if you try to follow a program or a nutrition plan, that a diet that works for your mom or your sister or your brother may not work for you because each, each of us are different individuals. We have different lifestyles. We have different goals. We have different sleeping patterns. You know, some of us have kids, some of us um, have so much time, or some of us even work in a physical job. And mistake number eight is not tracking progress. So as a personal trainer, one of the questions that we ask our clients is, give me a food diary. What have you been eating for the last three days? Most people, they don't even remember what they have eaten. And they wonder why they're not losing weight and they're exercising so much. And with the exercises itself, People don't track their, uh, their repetitions, the weight that they were lifting, what exercises we're doing on this day. And how would you know that you are getting somewhere with what you're doing? So you're following someone's program and you keep doing it for one week, two weeks. How do you know if you are uh, achieving the results that you want if you're not tracking your progress? And if you're tracking your progress just by looking at the weighing scale, you're already making a mistake there. Because when you start exercising, you start building muscles. And muscles are heavier than fat. So you can see in your weighing scale that your weight is not changing and you start getting frustrated, start getting impatient. And, but you don't know that you're converting muscles and that's why your weight is not changing. Do you see what I mean? Let me know in the comment section below if this resonated with you because uh, I believe a lot of people are getting frustrated if they don't see the weight loss that they're trying to achieve. Mistake number nine is uh, doing sit-ups to lose belly fat. <laughs> this is probably the most common uh, message I get from people. You know what, I want to exercise because I just want to lose uh, the fat here in my belly. Well, doing sit-ups will not do that when you exercise you actually build muscles so imagine you're doing crunches you're doing sit-ups and you're starting to build the muscles in your belly but the problem is your muscle is here this is your fat covering the muscles which is um, the anatomy of the body you have your skeleton you have your tissues your muscles then you have your skin and you have the fat so if you build like your biceps for example so this is normal. When I flex my biceps, it starts getting bigger. Imagine if there's a big fat on top of it. So the muscles doesn't show, the, the bicep just keep looking bigger. Same thing as with your belly. So you're doing curls, you're doing crunches. Your muscles are getting bigger, your belly starts to look bigger. And it's exactly what you don't wanna do. So. I will talk to you about um, how to lose the belly fat in another video, but let's proceed to the next mistake. And mistake number 10 is sweating means you're having a good workout. I know people who doesn't even sweat even after a hard workout. And some people just sweat so much just by standing by itself. <laughs> so sweating is not a good indication that you are working your muscles or your body well. Mistake number 11 is not sleeping enough. Guys, uh, I've talked about hormones in uh, one of my first videos, uh, but it's more about nutrition. But um, as a human being, our hormones is the driving factor. It's kind of the boss of our body. So whatever changes, whatever stress or whatever, um, whatever you put your body into, the hormones are the one responding to make the changes in your body. All right, so if you're not sleeping enough, actually 
your body is secreting a lot of stress hormones or cortisol. And that's one of the main factors why you're not losing fat. Because fat is actually a, a surviving mechanism of our body. When, when we were still uh, hunter-gatherers uh, 100,000 years ago, whenever we don't eat for a long time, what our body does is we, uh, the body stores fat to survive the winter, to survive the long times that we are not eating. So if you're under a lot of stress, your body is on a survival mode. It starts to store fat. And if you are exercising well, you're lifting really heavy, you know, you're really working your muscles up. If you don't sleep well, your body don't have enough time to recover. And that means the muscles are not rebuilding. All right. And for the last mistake, it's something to do with the body as well, or the, the anatomy of the body, which is not drinking enough water or not getting hydrated. I think this is common sense, so I'm not going to deal with it too much. But um, a lot of people tend to drink Gatorade or soda or fruit juices. And first, there's a lot of sugar in those. One bottle of uh, fruit juice is maybe equivalent to, let's say, five oranges. And normally, you would not eat five oranges, would you? So you're putting all the sucrose in your body in, when instead you should be drinking water. And water replenishes the muscles. It cleans your body. It does so much that I cannot cover in this uh, video alone. So this is a simple thing, but very, very important, guys, if you can pay attention to it. All right, so we've covered 12 common mistakes that people make. But the question is, what should you do? And I'm going to talk to you about that right now with the first one, which is learn the basics, guys. Uh, learn the basic exercises. Learn the basic movement patterns. Learn the correct form. You know, it's like building a house. You start with the foundation. You dig really deep and you build all the, you put like really strong steel beams so it can support the whole house. Even how high you want to build the house. You need a strong foundation. And that is by focusing on the basics. What are the basic exercises? Push up, pull up, squats. No matter what you do, you, are you going to the gym? Are you just lifting your body? Are you just doing your cardio? All these are the basics. And that is what I teach in the first few videos that I made for this channel. How to do the basic exercises. And you can watch them here or here. I'm gonna put the link there. And um, learn the basics, guys. You can do so many exercises. You can do follow someone else's program. But if you are not doing it correctly, you might be even hurting yourself or you're not targeting the right muscles, which is kind of um, wasting your energy and time for doing that exercise. So the second tip is, uh, as I've said, instead of doing so many exercises and doing so many repetitions, focus on the quality over the quantity. You can, I, I believe if you have been to the gym quite long enough, you will see that so many people are just focusing on how much weight they are lifting, how, much, um, how many repetitions they can do push-ups or pull-ups. But then when you start understanding, when you start learning, then you will see, okay, they're not doing it correctly. And it's mostly aesthetics. It looks good, it's impressive because they can do so much, but they're not really getting the, the, the best out of, the, out of each exercise. So instead of focusing on the quantity, on how many repetitions or how much weight you can do, do the exercise properly with proper form. Not only you will not make, you will not get any injury, you will not hurt yourself, you will actually even save time because every repetition counts. And actually, if you try to do the exercise properly as you've seen in, my, in my, any of my videos, you will see that one exercise or a basic push-up can be very difficult and very, be very effective to get the results that you want. And I am a living testimony of that. I've been doing a lot of body weight for like six months during the quarantine from the beginning of this year. And I was able to maintain my physique. I, I still have my abs for the last three years. And 
what I'm doing or what I'm teaching works. And that's why I want to share them with you. So my next step for you guys is read about the science of nutrition and anatomy or mainly learn about your body. Each and one of us are unique individual guys. With my sister, for example, I've been teaching her exactly how I would teach someone else or how I, I, I train myself. But until we found out that she is suffering from PCOS or our hormonal imbalance, whatever she's been doing, it was not working for her. She was not getting the results that she wants. And initially, both of us were confused and you know we don't understand what's going on. And it's very frustrating for her and it's very frustrating for me as a, as a coach, as a trainer. And it all boils down to hormones. It all boils down to something that she has that I don't. And we are brothers and sisters. You see what I'm getting at here, guys? So focus on yourself. There are certain habits or certain observation that you can do to understand how your body works. It takes time. It takes uh, longer. But if you can do this, it's gonna be more comfortable for you. You can sustain whatever changes or new habits that you're trying to form because it works for you. You know, um, you're not trying to copy someone else, which is not suitable for you. It's suitable for them as, uh, as per the, the first mistake or the second mistake that I was talking about. And knowledge is power, guys. If you learn about insulin, if you learn about cortisol, if you learn about how long a human being um, adapts, a, adapts a new habit, these are very powerful because once you know that, okay, it takes about 21 days to create a new habit. So what I'm doing now, I have to do for 21 days. I'm not gonna expect uh, an instant result, right? And that is most uh, most common mistake that people have. One thing, instant gratification. <laughs> and I talked about that in one of my, uh, my life coaching videos, which is on another channel. If you're interested, it's gonna be on the description box below. So on to my next tip is ask a professional. Guys, people like to give advice. And if you've been around the gym long enough, you may have experienced somebody approaching you, telling you like, why are you doing this? Or why are you not doing this? You should do this, you should do that. And you know, you're enthusiastic. You're happy that someone is paying attention to you. So you try to do their thing. You try to follow their advice. But um, as we've talked about, following someone else's advice or program may have worked for them, but will not work for you. So ask a professional. A professional has studied the exercise background, physiology, anatomy, and probably a lot of experience training other people or even themselves. And you can see that when you choose your trainer. It's like going shopping, you know? You don't wanna to go to a small shop where they are selling kind of questionable items. You wanna to go to a shop which is renowned. You know that they offer quality. So how do you get that from trainers? You see how they look, how they take care of themselves, how much energy they have. Do they look confident? Do they look, are they fit? Uh, are they walking the talk on what they're teaching you? So, and just like any other thing in life, People are different. Trainers are different. Every trainer or every professional has a specific expertise. So choose somebody who is really relatable to you. Somebody who can help you achieve the goals that you want because they have already uh, a good broad background from it. One of the things that I encountered as a personal trainer is it's the cost. Um, people sometimes think, you know, it's too much. Uh, I cannot afford this. But if you think about time, and I made a video about this, if you think about your time, I myself have spent maybe a good three to five years of making trial and error mistakes because I didn't want to spend for it. But I guess for me, it was uh, more like I needed to make the mistake so I can teach it to others. And that's where I am now. If you want, of course, you can spend so much time watching all the videos and trying to find what is the best for you. 
and maybe doing the same mistake as I did, trial and error. You watch something, you learn something, you implement it, see a few weeks how it works out, does it work or not. If you can afford that, fine. You know, if you enjoy this kind of process like I did, go ahead. But if you want actual results and you want to save time, maybe you can spend a little bit of money, but you get all the information, all the advice, and proper techniques, exercise program, which is personalized for you, specially tailored for your current level, current um, situation, or maybe even the current mindset. And that's what a professional can do for you. So my next tip is, uh, as we are in the same discussion of trying uh, trial and error, it's actually part of um, the learning process or the learning curve, which is trying many different things. As a human being, we want to achieve a certain goal and we think that there is a one-way track for it. But unfortunately for fitness, it's not like that. It's, um, it's something to do with finding out what is the best suitable um, program or nutrition plan for you. And you can only find out by trying many different things or trying a different diet. Is this food good for me or not? Let's see how it affects my body after eating it. Let's see how I feel after eating a certain food. Let's see how I feel after lifting weights or maybe dancing or maybe playing sports. And fitness is not all about just going to the gym, guys. Fitness can be sports, swimming, walking, dancing, um, maybe just, just cleaning the house. That's also fitness or physical activity. So find out what is, what is the best for you. And my final tip is have fun, okay? As we, as, as we are talking about trying many different things, this is where you find out what kind of activity is suitable for you. What is something that you really enjoy doing? Is it lifting weights? Is it swimming? Is it uh, dancing, yoga, uh, playing basketball? You know, there are so many things to really help you get into the fitness uh, shape or level that you want. And you will be able to stay consistent if you are having fun in whatever that is. Because the fitness activity that you're doing doesn't feel like a punishment. <laughs> it's an enjoyable experience. And that is what makes us a human. And that is what help, will help you to achieve your fitness goals when you're actually having fun, when you actually don't feel like you're working for something. And this applies to not just exercise, it applies to any part of your life. All right, so there you have it, guys. Uh, these are my tips and the common mistakes that people make, uh, that which I don't want you to make the mistake, guys. And thank you for watching this video. Thank you for being with me all this time. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm a personal trainer and the Justin Lee method is where fitness is complementing your lifestyle. It shouldn't be taking away from your life. And that is what I teach in this channel. And that's what I can teach you as a personal trainer. I want to help you get strong, get lean, and get fit for life. All right, guys. So if you have any specific questions, leave a comment below or send me a DM. Uh, my contact details is in the description box below. Um, I do personal coaching and have a good life have a good workout if you're just going to the gym and i'll see you in the next videos peace and love guys